NBC's chief White House correspondent Peter Alexander with reaction there. Hey, Peter. Hey, Hoda and Savannah, good morning to you. We want to pull back the curtain a little bit about what we know happened already earlier this morning, as you just heard from the president. Earlier this morning, President Biden joined in the Oval Office by Sherelle Griner, who you just heard from, as well as the Secretary of State, Tony Blinken, and the Vice President, Kamala Harris, who you see there, were able to speak with Brittany Griner by phone. And then later, Sherelle Griner, Brittany Griner's wife, was able to have a private conversation by phone with her wife from the president's study. So the question now is, where does she go? Senior administration officials are telling NBC News that Brittany Griner is being flown to a military medical facility in San Antonio for care and treatment effectively to make sure that she is physically well and to check on her. You can imagine the mental and physical ordeal that Griner would have had over the course of nearly 10 months behind bars. She was there first detained February 17th of this year. We are told that Sherelle Griner will be flying to San Antonio where she will have the first opportunity to greet her wife. But for the White House, this is a major diplomatic achievement. But as you note, it does come with some significant frustration. The inability to be able to get Paul Whalen home as well. Whalen, a U.S. businessman, a former U.S. Marine, remains detained in Russia. The U.S. says that his detention is unacceptable and that it is wrongful. And now for the first time, we are hearing from the family of Paul Whalen, his brother David Whalen, releasing a statement just moments ago celebrating the release of Brittany Griner, but saying, despite the possibility that there might be an exchange without Paul, our family is still devastated. I can't even even fathom how Paul will feel when he learns. The exchange of Brittany Griner, we are told, came, according to U.S. officials, for a man by the name of Victor Boot, a convicted Russian arms dealer who had already served 14 years. He had seven years left on his uh, sentence. And it's a significant swap. This was, a, this was a stinging swap for the U.S. to have to make. We are told by senior officials here that the U.S. did everything in its power to try to bring Whalen home as well. But the Russians made it very clear that it was going to be Brittany Griner or no one. The U.S. continues to deny that Whalen was a spy, but his is an espionage, uh, espionage case. Savannah and Hodia, at this point, the Russians are not willing to turn Whalen over. That's the news. And then, I mean, Victor Boot, as you mentioned, uh, um, obviously a convicted arms dealer, referred to by some in the U.S. as a merchant of death. Uh, it was his trade that secured the release of Brittany Griner this morning. Well, we're going to turn now to uh, NBC's chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell, who broke this story earlier for us. Andrea, good morning. Good morning, uh, Hoda and Savannah. It is, as we say, bittersweet because Paul Whelan is not out, but you saw the joy on Sherelle Griner's face and her words uh, with Griner being out. And I think that it's really notable in this statement from David Whelan that he says that he is so glad that she's on her way home, that uh, as the family member of a hostage, an American hostage, he fully understands the joy of this and that the Biden administration made the right decision in bringing her home, validating the, the very tough decision that they had to make. And what a senior official just said to me is, we had no choice. The Russians, at the end of these negotiations, where they were trying to figure out a second person, because the Russians wanted what they called parity, two for two, but they wanted a spy, and the U.S. said, we don't have a spy in our custody. And so what they said was, according to the senior official, the choice was one, meaning Griner, or none. And they were prepared to cancel Griner's release if the U.S. had insisted on trying to get Paul Whelan out.